Hey guys, I'm back with Stanley, and we just had a heck of an adventure, and I think the narrator's mind just got wiped. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> and there we go again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps. Perhaps we did this time. Uh, that was a lot shorter trip. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. What should we do now, guys? Narrator's broken. Let's, let's obey here. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Oh no, oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. Yes. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. This is my favorite room. is totally my favorite room. I love it here. You have nothing else to say to me, narrator? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hmm. <laughs> Extreme bathrooms. It's my first time able to come in here. I can open this now. Oh, is that a business strategy? Gun to a panda's head? Savage. <clears throat> yes. I've wanted to do this for so long. My jam. What? Does this go nowhere? Is he? It's whispering Stanley.
Oh my god, is he like dancing? He just went one, two, three, four. <sighs> He's singing along. If you listen. He's like boom, boom, boom. Nothing. All right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly, yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Well then. Curious if there's any uh, passcodes on any of this paperwork. Because I know when you flip the switch to on, it's looking for a code or something. I guess I could this Google mind it. Control facility. It was too hard. Well, where's the fun in that, right? <laughs> A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to Ooh. them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there. <laughs> It's all the same to me. Yeah, we're gonna figure this room out. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Bam. <clears throat> well, we'll have to get that room figured out. There's gotta be something going on there. There's, there it wants a code or something. But here we are again. What do you have to say this the time? The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Meeting room. Okay, now we got two inputs again. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he and this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. Wow. This room. What a beautiful room. It's what beautiful. What a gorgeous but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Let's go in here this time. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Key card. So before we went, we jumped off this guy. And went that way. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've we'll gotten go off on time. the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. For her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Is there a love interest? That's oh God, her, that's... Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Hello? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> You're beautiful. Gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Press P on your keyboard. I don't want to. I'm not set up to do that. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. You know what? No. We'll press B. Z. C. S. D. W. A. S. D. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Press 8 to watch TV. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. 
that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's so trippy. It's like the game's basically saying, stop playing me. Oh, I don't think I can resist. Dang it. What's back here? We're doing it. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Please die. <laughs> Starting over again? Oh, goodness. All right. Gonna end this one here. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Cause me, you're out.